Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are in the world. I am Tigris Osborne. I'm the chair of the National Association to Advance Fat Acceptance and welcome to the NAFA webinar series. This is a special edition of the NAFA webinar series for Fat Liberation Month. May 2021 is our first Fat Liberation Month and we're so happy to have you celebrating with us throughout the month of May. Um, today's special guest is Spencer Pablo of Spencer Pablo Photography and However Chubby. We're gonna get to Spencer in just a second. Wanna share a couple of announcements with you before we bring our special guest on. Um, first and foremost, we wanna thank our friends from Pro Bono ASL. They are providing ASL interpreting to us uh, for us live today, and you'll see them in the video if you're watching later on YouTube. Today's interpreters are Selena and Susan, and we are so happy to have them here. If you need ASL interpreting for your events, um, you can find Pro Bono ASL at probonoasl.com. Um, to learn more about NAFA and our events, you can also visit our website, nafa.org, n-a-a-f-a.org. And there you will find information about Fat Liberation Month, our regular webinars that we host throughout the year, our Fat Community Voices blog, and many other activities that we have going on and coming up. Um, in particular, I want to highlight for you the next two webinars that we have coming up after we spend this fantastic hour-ish with Spencer today. Um, on Monday, May 17th at 4 p.m. Pacific, we'll be hosting longtime activist Marilyn Wan. Uh, Marilyn is best known for her book, Fat So, Fat Exclamation Point, So Question Mark. Um, and uh, Marilyn will be talking to us about the 25 years that she has been a fat activist, the changes that she's seen and the hopes that she has for the future. And then on Wednesday, uh, May 19th, we'll be joined by the Reverend Dr. E.K. Dalfon, who will be here to speak with us about um, fat and faith and, um, and working against waste, weight bias and weight stigma within spiritual communities. Uh, to register for these webinars, you can just go to nafa.org slash webinars, and we do require registration, so please make sure that you do that if you would like to be able to join us live during those sessions. With, uh, and you can also see all of the other events. We still have numerous more events coming up for Fat Liberation Month. That event calendar is also under the Fat Liberation Month tab at nafa.org. Without any further ado, I would like to introduce you to today's special guest, Spencer Pablo. Hi, Spencer. Um, hey, guys. I was hey. tracking the, the AI, so it's accurate, pretty good. So far, I will eventually say something like your name that it will, uh, <laughs> yeah. it will completely mess up. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about Spencer before we start asking Spencer some questions. Comfortable behind the lens for 20 years, Spencer Pablo's images have appeared in newspapers and museums. A photographer who likes to keep challenging himself, he doesn't sit still. He photographs people, places, and things before joining the ranks of uh, a Sony, Sony artisan of imagery. Spencer Pablo taught many workshops from the typical photo-based workshops to emergency dispatch, software conferences, and everything in between. Born in the Philippines, Spencer moved to Southern California at a very early age as the son of a US Navy sailor. He is a father, husband, a Sony artisan of imagery, and a computer scientist with experience in RF engineering and systems design. Spencer is also the creator of However Chubby, which we're gonna focus on a lot today, which spotlights the bodies of men and masculine people in imagery that isn't afraid of the calories and represents bodies that are underrepresented in the media. Last year, Spencer took the plunge into self-portraits, a discipline that he was once quite unsure about. In fact, I, I believe I read an article, Spencer, where you started by saying, I hate selfies. So we're going to talk about that. Um, but, and, but he took the plunge, and now he's going to share tips and experiences on making sure that we strive to put ourselves in good light to showcase who we are and not minimize ourselves. Ladies and gentlemen and friends of all gens, please welcome Spencer Pablo to the NAFA webinar oh, series. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. What a cool intro. Uh, first off, thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, I used to teach workshops uh, for photography, sunsets, how to do 
astrophotography, things like that. So this is this is actually the first time I'm talking about portraits and uh, portraits for you know folks with masks. So uh, I'm yes. very very excited. I'm gonna I'm gonna see how uh, how this goes. I wish someone was here to kick me under the leg, just you know under the table, just in case I say something like weird. But uh, you, you give me the side eye in case I in case I do that. You are amongst <laughs> you are amongst friends. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Spencer. If All we right. if we didn't, if we didn't trust you, we wouldn't have you here. Well, so, thank you so much for this. Um. So so let's before we talk about your portraiture, just let's just talk a little bit about a little bit more than your bio said about who you are as just as a photographer and as a man. Um. So you you grew up in SoCal, and you became a photographer when? I got um, it over been, 20, over twenty years, but like, what's the when and yeah. why? So, um, you know, it, uh, I like to think that uh, a lot of folks, uh, the moment they pick up a camera uh, and they start learning the, uh, they, they start learning uh, kind of the mechanics behind it, how it works, uh, they begin to dabble with that, that term photographer. For me, it started when I started getting paid, like to be a professional photographer. That was kind of the, uh, that was the thing, but it was more uh, landscape photography. Um, uh, architecture, real estate; those were the those were uh, the industries uh, I was in, and like you mentioned, I, I was uh, uh, an ambassador for a lot of the consumer electronics brands. Um, there's a tripod that's kind of recording me way over there uh, that was sent to me. Some lighting I have, um, so you know I had some reach in there, but it was really just kind of in that in that niche of things you hang in your wall, you know, uh, kind of in the living room beautiful sunset rocks things like that and so uh with respect to people that was families people that i would photograph uh, events weddings so those are the kind of things i've been doing for the past two decades and i know it sounds weird to say twin years but yeah it's, it's been that it's been a it's been that long <laughs> you were you were you were a computer science guy you were you were the it guy like how did yes. you get from how did you get from being in that world and having photography as a hobby to being a professional photographer. Okay, so there's a, I, I kind of have this feeling where you you try to exercise both hemispheres of your brain. You have the, you mm -hmm. know, you have the creative side and then you have the analytical side. Mm -hmm. And I think early on, I discovered that I feel better and I don't feel, you know, kind of unbalanced if, if I get to exercise both. So by day, I'm this guy with a, you know, with calculations and, and, and all that stuff. And I, and, and, uh, when I put that down, this was early on when I put that down, then I pick up the, the, the camera, I'd start taking pictures. And then I found out that they can kind of live together and I can be creative and analytical at the same time. And so, um, uh, my wife told me, she goes, every one of your photos, if there's going to be a line, it has to be perfectly straight. And I remember she once saw me, uh, take an image and I spent a good 10 minutes just making sure the lines were, were completely level and things like that. It just, it hurts the analytical part <laughs> of my brain if, if something is ever so slightly off. So uh, yeah, it, it's it's pretty much now I've, I've found a way that uh, uh, with respect to the creativity and you'll see, uh, I'll, I'll bring in lights. I'll bring, I'll bring in some of these things and I have to get it at the right location to, to bring out, shat, you know, to, to conceal, to bring out stuff. It's just the, kind of the whole picture is, is uh, how I see them kind of married in the middle. So you so you made that move into professional photography and then you really started to develop your craft. And mm -hmm. when did you make the switch to portraiture and why? So I've always photographed part, part of the past, maybe 15 years, um, I, I would photograph families, weddings, events, corporate photography. Um, and so a lot of the things, uh, you know, you go into park, you go to the beach here. We live in San, I live in San Diego. And so, you know, I'm surrounded by all this, this beautiful, uh, all these beautiful locations, but throwing people in these environments, it was kind of a thing that I liked because there was a little bit of landscape photography, a little bit of portraiture. And um, that's where that started taking pictures 15, 20 years ago is, is when I started. I found, uh, gosh, maybe like almost a decade ago, I found that as I started taking pictures of like these big CEOs or, um, you know, the, the uh, 
the family members and those with size would always try to figure out how many people they could put in front of them to try to minimize their sizes. Um, and, and I started to notice this, you know, several years ago and only very recently did, did I, something in me go, oh, that's heartbreaking. You know, you've got a, a Fortune 500 CEO who gets in front of a camera and he's just, you know, he, he started from nothing and now he's got this big company and um, he, he wants to disappear as soon as the camera pops out, you know, or you've got the, you've got the mom, the dad and, and all, and the grandparents and all that stuff. And this, and I remember, I remember this one shot where there's a grandfather and from that there's, uh, he's surrounded by like, I want, I think it's like five or six families. And so I, I, I uh, oppose them on some steps and he's, he's kind of in the, you know, the, the family units in the middle and, and, you know, I kind of spread them out. And he would always, he'd, he'd shrug his shoulders and, and he would try to try to find a way to minimize himself. And it really started to sink in, you know, people who are shaped like me or bigger and they just, you know, they, they wanted to disappear. They just didn't, they didn't feel comfortable in front of the camera. Uh, so it broke my heart. It really did. And I started to photograph more and more folks um, instead of minimizing them. Uh, I would show that they are uh, powerful, and uh, they, I don't know how many conferences for photography. A lot of the the, the folks who are on here um, have been to, but a lot of times you'll go to one and it'll say how to photograph plus size folks, and you'll go and you'll attend, and it's all about how to sculpt the light to try to make them look smaller and smaller. And I'm like, no, if you're, if you're fat, you're gonna photograph fat, own it. And, you know, and then that way it's that confidence that kind of that is important, you know, just, just own uh, your body. Did you always have that yourself as, um, no. as a bigger guy? No, 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 not at all. Um, I, I was always the photographer who would try to empower the folks that I photographed. Um, and I tell them, hey, you look so great. And, and I would be genuinely ecstatic. And so what I would do is I'd take a picture and then I'd run to them and I'd be like, look, look at this back. This is how you look like. You look wonderful. But I never really turned the camera on myself. I always saw myself kind of as the, uh, the tool that takes the pictures. And that's, that's my piece of this process. Um, but also photography is kind of the way I, I uh, handle stress, you know? And so like when things get, when things get crazy, I like being alone with my with my uh, cameras, looking at a waterfall, looking at the sunset, looking at the ocean. So I never really saw myself. I, I never really thought about it um, until the pandemic happened, and I I was afraid to go out. I have a I have an immunodeficient body, and so I I couldn't go outside. And early on, we didn't really know about COVID nineteen and its effects, and you know. Um, so I was here at my house and I converted a lot of these things. And that's when I said, you know what? I need to take pictures. I need to handle the stresses of what's going on, working from home, my daughter's in school, how she doing this thing remotely, trying to, and, and you know, as, as family, we're all in each other's spaces. So how do I handle this, this growing stress? And so I pointed the camera towards myself a little over a year ago um, for the first time uh, without the intent of educating, uh, let me see if this is coming out right. When I would when I would take a picture of myself, it would be uh, from the perspective of I want to show people what different settings on your cameras do. Boop, boop, boop. There, I'm I'm going to take a picture of myself, and that's how I look. When I started taking pictures of myself at the beginning of the pandemic, that's I started taking pictures because I wanted to get in that process of just taking pictures again. And so when I started to do that, I started to disconnect from being the tool, of the guy taking the pictures, into being the, the model. And so that's when I saw a lot of parallels. So it was kind of, you know, parallels uh, with um, the people I normally would photograph and myself. And so this is a new thing for me. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's, I, I'm, you know, I'm discovering every day. I'm learning every day. So and so how where did that line up with when you started however chubby because however chubby was going before the pandemic started right 
Yes. Okay. Okay. That's a great question. So, however, Chubby uh, started in it was a it was a um, a way that I wanted to. Yeah, you know, I don't know if you've 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 seen billboards of like Justin Bieber in his Calvin Klein's Times Square. You're at yeah. the bus stop, and there's just advertising everywhere. You know, of, of folks just kind of showing off their body, and it's just it's always it's always in our periphery. The thing is, they're they're always they're always skinny. They're always like, you know, they're, they're the they're the opposite of, of how I look like. And it, it just felt like, gosh, there's not a lot of representation of us out there. So I wanted to show that um, folks out there, uh, we could we could do the same things. We could hop on a bike. We could go on crazy hikes. We could photograph. We could do the the uh, adventuring things that um, that the skinny folks. Uh, take we're just big and and that's actually that's why it's called however chubby you know so and you started it on instagram right i did um i i also had a growing amount of uh of work that i did with the plus size community but before i had however chubby it just didn't organically fit in the um uh, landscape industry which is what my other instagram is so i i decided to start it and I wanted to give a nod to the brands that support bigger folks uh, by actually taking pictures. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, having marketing that shows, you know, bodies like ours. It's not like that. You know, for, it's, I have this weird thing where there's an aspirational plus size person, the ex football player, the one shaped like a, a refrigerator, right? And I call it that aspirational because that's like this bit, you know, it's always that it's, it's, when you see plus size photography in marketing equipment, uh, I'm sorry, in, in uh, marketing material, you'll see that particular look. Mm -hmm. And it's, I don't know about you, but I don't know very many plus size folks who are of, who look like a refrigerator, you know, we're, we're pear shaped. So, excuse me. Well, and well, there are lots of shapes, right? We, we were just talking yeah. about with, um, uh, with Bruce Sturgill from Chubster and with, um, and with Tony Tails, uh, who does uh, graphic design and art, mm -hmm. with both of those in our last couple of webinars, we were talking about that that sort of preferencing of of certain body type. Bruce also mentioned the ex football players in in men and masculine yeah. fashion. And with Tony, we talked about the sort of the the common depiction of the hourglass shape when we're talking about feminine forms. Right. And you're right, like we don't; those are beautiful forms, um, but we don't all come in those shapes as as larger folks. Right. So I wanted to show folks out there that regular people, um, and, or, you know, regular guys too, because I don't see a lot in, in the industry of, uh, of uh, the fat guys out there. Um, you know, we could put on underwear, we could do the Justin Bieber angles, we could do, you know, the, the things that we see on the, the billboards out there. We're just our normal size and we don't have to we don't have to always, uh, what's it called? The pursuit of happiness, where you're always looking for happiness, but you're not content with where you're at. So I just wanted to show people, hey, you know what? Kind of be comfortable with where you're at. And then about a year ago, I started taking my own medicine and drinking my own Kool-Aid. So <laughs> so let's look at some of your um, your photos, folks. Um, oh, if you're okay, with, right on. If you're with us live, uh, Spencer's about to start a screen share and show us some things. And of course, you can find Spencer's landscape and other kinds of photography on Instagram at Spencer Pablo Photography. And then more pictures from However Chubby, it's at However Chubby. Um, but uh, Spencer's going to show us a few while we continue to talk. And y'all can also start thinking about some questions when Spencer's finished um, with his slideshow. We'll take some questions from the chat. All righty. Changing my view. Can you? We're good. See this little speed. Okay, <laughs> okay. So uh, this is the the splash page for my. Oh God, it's so weird because you know, like we're a, over a year into this work from home stuff, and death by PowerPoint has kind of been, you know, the the tempo for <laughs> the past year. So I'm going to try to go through this as fast as I can. But I wanted to show this first slide because this is actually the first time that I was able to. Uh, this was from the first set that I took last March, the weekend after um, the world pretty much shut down. So this, I took, I want to say about 10 shots. This is one of the, the images that I took in which I wanted to just capture how I felt at that particular moment. I didn't know where I was. I felt alone. So 
that's how come this image is there. Um, yeah, so that's the that's from the first set. So this is gonna be <laughs> this is gonna be a journey uh, through my my selfies, and and I used to have a stigma with respect to selfies. Uh, as a matter of fact, when I wrote this article uh, for Chubster, you had mentioned, I wrote this one a couple of years ago, and the very first sentence was, I hate selfies. Um, selfies had a stigma for me. It was, um, uh, here's my brunch. Here's a plate. I'm going to get in front of it, and I'm going to do a peace sign. You know, it, it had that whole thing, but on top of that, it was like, <laughs> you know, you'd, you'd always see, uh, for me, a lot of the selfies I would see would just be really Oh, kind of like weird. It, it, there's a toilet bowl in the back. The towel, there's you know, there's a toilet there's, bowl in the back. Uh, oh my gosh. So, you know, but by the way, while I'm on this slide, I want to kind of, I invite you to go visit Chupster to go ahead and read this article because I have examples of what to do instead of, and then Bruce from Chupster has the bad examples. It's, it's kind of funny. Um, but essentially the, the uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to show um, you're gonna need a tripod for when you take these selfies. Uh, don't hold your camera, uh, get more than your face. That was another thing that I noticed about selfies. When people would take selfies, it would be like this. Hey, look, hey, this is my selfie. You know, and I was just like, no, you want context. You want kind of the, where you're at, um, but you have to make it natural. And so one of the things I discovered over the past year is facial posing. Uh, so work on that. Mind the background. I'm sitting here in my garage with uh, the seamless paper here. I have a, a bicycle. Here's the, here's the bell right there. There's the bell. of. I'm literally sitting underneath my wife's bicycle right where I'm at. This garage is a huge mess, but I, I brought down this, this paper. So then that way uh, it's simpler. So mind your backgrounds. Make sure that uh, um, you stand out the way you need to. Okay. And then look for the light. Uh, because a lot of times people will uh, take pictures and the light's just really bad. What happens when you use your cell phone and the light's really bad? Things get blurry. You lose detail. Uh, my garage is blessed with skylights. I put these, I installed these a couple years ago. So yeah, you you know, just kind of look out for uh, for that stuff. Um, the next slide here uh, shows that, well, you want to you want to start taking some selfies. Here's the easiest one. Go outside, bring a tripod, because, you know, like I said, every one of these selfies, you're going to need a tripod of some sort, something that holds your camera. Um, so head outside, uh, look for the good light, look for the stop light. Um, the first two images were taken at sunrise, and then the last one was taken at sunset. You know, you kind of want to look for the bookends of the day, because that's your golden light. That's when the light looks really, really good. Um, if you if you shoot in the middle, I'll have an example here. Uh, the, actually, the very next one is an example of shooting in the middle of the day. Um, it's typically something that portrait photographers will say to avoid. But the reason I have this here is because this is what happens when you photograph in the middle of the day. You get hard shadows, and sometimes it works. In this case here, this is one of the um, the uh, my friends. His name is Rodney. He's actually I have a fence. Um, and I have uh, graffiti from a local artist, and I just I uh, nailed it onto my fence. And it's a it's the small it's like the least used part of my entire house. Um, it, I want to say it's like three and a half feet. So all of the photos that I'm sharing here, I'm actually in my office, and I took the screen off, and I'm shooting from my office to the outside. So Rodney is leaning over there just to show you. I, I kind of zoomed out. So you can see the roof of my neighbor is in the background of that of that other one over there. Uh, by the way, this is, see, this, a, is a, I, this is a no contact photo shoot that you did during COVID with Rod. Yes. Oh, I'm. I'm yes. Uh, absolutely. Uh, social. I did maybe four no contact social distancing, wearing masks, um, that whole thing, and actually uh, photographing these folks. Uh, None of them entered my house. This I, I converted my garage into the studio space. So then that way, um, you know, we we didn't actually. I will tell you right now, no one's actually entered my the living space of my house yet. Even though we're, you know, the the clients I'm working with now are vaccinated. So yeah, this 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 was one of the the first few that I started to photograph, and this was for Bearskin, which is one of those companies that that's pretty awesome because 
they're one of the companies that actually show big guys comfortable, confident in their skin. And, and I love the vibe that, that they give. So, um, you know, uh, so that one is that. Here's another one. I'm, uh, this is me in the garage. That's, uh, this, the, the first image there was something I was playing with, the, the kind of levitation look. Uh, I'm literally sitting right where that image was taken. Um, I was putting away Christmas lights and I was, I was like, you know what? The lighting here in my garage is pretty good. I didn't bring any additional lighting. You can almost see the kiss of light from my skylight up at the top of that. Um, but yeah, I wanted to, to play around. Uh, so I took that selfie and then the selfie on the other one showing a mask, that was me uh, wearing a mask, just trying to show, hey guys, uh, let's, take this, let's take this thing seriously. Um, the next one here is available light. If you can bring in light, shoot with available light. Again, I say skylights. Uh, my friend Jerry, he was here for another bearskin shoot. Uh, he was standing kind of in this area here. You can actually see this is the, the chain that's in that image uh, that brings my backdrop down. That's the light that I get when I just have my garage open. It's that diffuse light. So you're not, it's not direct from the sun. And then I was painting. Uh, I have this thing where I, I like to, uh, I've discovered, hey, I want to show mundane daily living um, and, you know, and just try to go, hey, this, this is where I'm at. It doesn't have to be extravagant. You just, it's okay to be not having brunch with your friends. It is okay to be painting your hallway. So I, I kind of wanted to show stuff like that. So that's the, the next image. No additional light, just whatever light was around. Um, so uh, Spencer, when you're ahead. showing us these ones, when you're showing us these ones of the other models, we, we know how to, I mean, we can apply some of these same things if we're working with photographers ourselves and they are not used to these aspects of highlighting larger bodies. But what about when we're, how are you doing these yourself? Are you using a selfie timer? Are you using oh. a remote? Like what, how are you getting these images of yourself without an arm length selfie situation? Oh, so remember, always have a tripod, right? So always, always have a tripod. You can find some inexpensive ones. I mean, like here is a tripod that holds a phone. Um, uh, goes right there. This one was uh, fairly inexpensive. I think I got it on sale for like 20 bucks. But what's really cool about this is you've got your phone and it has this little button that comes off. And this is the one that you can trigger your, your phone. Um, I also have a remote for my cameras when they're on the tripod. There's just going to, you'll see some shots on here that are just going to be really difficult to do with a phone. But uh, no matter what, have a tripod. I'm going to bring, I'm going to show you my ring light here, but I'm not going to talk about the ring light. I'm going to just, the reason I wanted to show you this is because I wanted to show you there's a little tiny tripod attached to the bottom here. Let me turn this thing off here. There we go. And this is a tripod here that also becomes kind of a, a comfortable selfie stick that I don't know if you can see, it's got buttons that say, hey, take the picture, zoom in, zoom out. Um, but yeah, it's, it's you know, just get a, get one of these small tripods that you can lean on there, uh, on stuff um, or get a full blown tripod that stands on, that stands on the floor. Uh, lots of different ways you can photograph yourself. Let me turn this back on, hang on a moment. Lots of different ways you can photograph yourself if you have cameras like this. So you're, you're pointing it at yourself and the screen is back here and you can't see the screen because this is as far as it will go, right? And if you're like that, you can't see it. Well, I found this thing, now they have it on Amazon and I think it's like 10 bucks. And what it does is it slides right in here. And then at that point you can actually, it's a mirror. There's a mirror right here. And wow. I don't know if you can see right there. It's a very analog way mm -hmm. of taking a picture of yourself. Or, you know, it's you pick a more up the camera. version of what some people do where they use the bathroom mirror to, to see what's on their screen. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, oh another one of your favorite things. You you <laughs> you, you, so the, the bathroom, actually the very, I think it's like two slides from, from here. Um, it's, it's my take on the bathroom reflection selfie. Uh, but okay. lastly, I just wanted to show you some cameras actually have a screen that flips forward, makes it nice and nice and convenient. Um, the reason why it's important to use good 
you know, the, the good quality cameras is because when you use that front, the selfie camera, it's, it's a, a lower quality camera. So when, when you shoot with this, you know, with the tiny camera that's up at the front, it makes it so convenient. But when you shoot with the back one, it forces you to slow down and actually be more deliberate about the photos that you take. And also the sensor in the back, it's actually a, a lot better. It's considerably better. They put the, the good cameras in the back camera. So avoid using that front one at all, you know? Um, I see some cameras out, I'm sorry, I see some phones out there that actually don't have a front camera. They're, they're, they're obscure cameras from brands you've never heard of, but I, I'm, I give them virtual high fives because they know that that front camera is just not very good. So, um, uh, more on the bathroom mirror selfie in just a little bit. The next slide here, like I said before, I wanted to kind of capture the everyday, the mundane, and I wanted to show, you know what? I'm taking pictures from the work from home life. And you, uh, the first one was taken at summer. I run really hot. And so like right now, I'm actually kind of sweating. There's a fan. I hope you don't hear the fan noise. I run hot. So a lot of times I'm working from home. I will be shirtless. I just was like, hey, look, this is me. This is how cluttered my background is, but this is a work from home life. Uh, the, the, the second one is uh, I'm done for the day. You know, you've got that side light. All of these are just that available light from the side. And then that, the little the inset image there is of me like third four hour meeting of the day, uh, for real. So, you know. <laughs> Highly relatable. All right, here we go. <laughs> yes. So the bathroom selfies, right? Um, the first one, because I see, you, you know what I mean? The, the, the selfies that people take where uh, here's a mirror and then this is how the selfie looks like. You know, you're, you're essentially showing the back of your phone. Um, don't do that, don't do that. So the photo, the black and white image on, on this particular one here was a take on how to do a reflection selfie without actually showing your camera. And the next one I just wanted to show you, it was this camera here, just above my sink, using one of my little tripods, um, using just bathroom light, you know, I, uh, the light that's already available right over there. And the next one, I get asked a ton of questions, even before the pandemic, about uh, a ring light. And so the ring light, I'm going to bring that guy back here, the ring light is, is uh, one of these things, I think these things run like maybe 30 bucks. And I usually see folks illuminate their faces by putting the ring light in front. And this is great for makeup. But from a photographer's perspective, it flattens your facial features, right? So, and it also, I don't know if you can see my eyes, it gives that weird alien look to your eyes, right? And some people like that. I don't judge. It's giving you but, a little bit of a like who in Whoville knows shadow. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes. So, because I'm heated a little bit, so I've got like a little bit of like, uh, I just have this natural like blush to my face, but normally my face would just be like flat. What I like to do with these ring lights is I like to, to bring them over to the side just a little. And what happens is your facial features start coming out. Um, it, it, keep it kind of close so then that way you still have the soft light over there. But that's, that's what I do with a ring light. I never really do this because it flattens your face. So if you, I see you've got a ring light. <laughs> you know, it's not, it, the cord's not close. I'm gonna see if I can plug it in so I'll, you can tell me what to do with so, it. So if you do, if you do makeup stuff, because you know, uh, makeup YouTube, they'll, they'll do this because that's you're actually supposed to look just kind of at the face and and how it, how evenly it spreads. But photographically, um, I, I don't think it works out too well. It also brings out a lot of the blemishes of your. Oh my God, my. Wow. Yeah. So it really brings out the blemishes of your skin. So I'll put that back over there. So that's my perspective on the ring light. Um, but some people don't even have, you know, a, a ring light or uh, their windows are in a, in a weird location uh, that doesn't let that, uh, the light in flatteringly. I have this slide here to show you using a $20 light that I got from Walmart. Um, how to illuminate yourself and that's this is literally just a cheap lamp and it's all about how close there, there's like the, the physics behind it um how close you are to a light versus how far the light is from you that's how, that's how soft uh lighting can get so these are just examples using a very cheap uh cheap light
here, this is when I talk about cheap light. This is, uh, I had a shoot and gosh, a, <laughs> if you told me like a year and a half ago that I would be modeling underwear, I would have just laughed my face off. But this one here was from a company that sent me some underwear. Um, and I also wanted to show folks, you could photograph yourself using cheap light. So I'm leaning on uh, the part where I normally keep the trash can in my office. So I, I just take the trash can out and I'm sitting there and I'm illuminated by my $8 closet light. So I have this light that goes in the closet and I turned it on. This is eight bucks, but I, I'm just a fan of shadows. Um, so yeah, that one there is is literally using maybe the bottom three feet of space. Uh, I get a lot of questions about, you know, Spencer, I don't have space for a backdrop. I don't have space to to do a lot of the uh, a lot of the cool photo shoots that you do. I just I wanted to show you. I have a feeling if you look at your floor space, you probably do. Uh, speaking of which, the next slide here is uh, my under counter lighting. I saw this back in like May in my kitchen. We have these lights that go underneath the counters. And I was like, you know, what? this is really cool. I wanna see if I can photograph my body uh, kind of mimicking a lot of the sports car photography that I've seen where it the uh, they, they bring a sports car in, they illuminate it top down and it just really shows like the curves of the Lamborghini or the Ferrari or the Porsche. I wanted to see how it applied to the curves of a human being. And so, so taking that concept from the lights in my kitchen, uh, I, I found uh, $15 lights here and this is my friend Seth. Uh, and this was a way that I can try to get that look here outside of the living space of my house. And we just, we had fun. I think this, as soon as I busted out the, this uh, set of $15 light strips, which by the way, they change color. Um, that's a, This one's a little blue. So the lights were in, in blue mode. We were doing this for like 45 minutes to an hour, super fun. Um, here's a, the next one here is a, is a drone. Um, I was, I wanna say it was Thanksgiving. We, during the pandemic, we canceled all of our vacation plans except for, hey, why don't we go out in the middle of nowhere in the desert and go camping? So, you know, took the family out um, to the uh, sand dunes. I, I threw my drone up, I attached some lights to it to try to get lights that I'm just not used to seeing anywhere. And so this is what happens. Of course, you need to use a tripod. I'm not kidding when I say you need a tripod. This one here is gonna need one. Of those, and hey, and you're, using you're, a, and you're using a remote with your camera, right? So you're not the camera and then running back over there. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so my wife, what she did was she made sure I was centered with the center of my frame because uh, if the if the light coming from my drone isn't if I'm not exactly centered underneath there, that would I oh, that would annoy me so much. So I I don't like working in Photoshop. <laughs> so she helped me there. After she helped me align where I needed to be, I had my camera taking a shot every 10 seconds. So uh, a lot of cameras have intervalometers built in uh, where it'll be like, okay, every 10 seconds, take a shot. That's how I do time lapses, for instance. I just became a time lapse here. 90% of the images sucked, they were blurry, but this, these uh, here worked. So, um, and if you're lucky enough to have a drone that does this, your drone, probably has a camera. And this one here is uh, what happens when I am floating on a pool and I had one of these work from home lights that illuminate me when I'm chatting like I'm doing here. But I, this one's waterproof. So I had this underneath me in the pool and I applied some color grades to, to kind of give it that cosmic, you know, the uh, kind of superhero in space look. So that one is, is that example if you have a drone. Um, and then, oh, I, oh my gosh. The, so the light that I have on this one here is a light that I got from Home Depot. And it's actually the, this one illuminating me. I don't know if, if I can bring this in here, but this light, oh, you can see the shadow. That, the light that is illuminating me right now, just over here at stage left, is the light that I'm holding um, when I was wearing, uh, the Chewbacca onesie over there. And then the other one is what happens when you take a work from home light 
in this case, this one here, I call it a work from home lot because these things sold a lot during the past year because we needed to find a way to illuminate ourselves. And these kind of attached to the top of your laptop. Um, and, and that's how they were marketed. Well, anyway, I shot this one here using one of my strobes, just top down. But I confirmed last night that you can do that same thing using like a $40 light and a, a, a grid if you have one. This is, this is a grid that attaches to this light that allows me to uh, direct the light. If you see here, there's like a little grid. Here's the other grid that I use. Uh, for the actual shot. And what that does is it takes a spill of light that normally scatters everywhere and it directs it in one direction. That's how come it's that hard straight down light. Uh, almost done with this. Um, here is what happens when I actually bring out my big lights. Um, you get that cool side light. You know I'm a big fan of the side light. Middle one is a projector. I missed the outside halfway through the pandemic and I'm, I miss being able to go do landscape stuff. So I wanted to show what would happen if I took uh, and I projected the landscape that I would photograph on me. Um, and then just the, you know, the run of the mill uh, studio lit image over there. And that brings me to uh, one of my more recent shoots, uh, which was a lot of fun. Um, this one here is using, and I, I saw this on Instagram. This, you know, those Instagram ads that are like super popular. I don't know how much these things run on Instagram, but it's this USB powered light. Um, and it does, it, it gives you this cool like rainbow look and it's, it's a dome right here. And I photographed my friend Freddie right here using that light. It's a very unique look. Um, I just had my camera on a, on a tripod remote trigger. And I was just holding it around. Speaking of which, this is Freddie, uh, one of my greatest friends uh, in the world. I wanted to see if we can bring him in. Uh, yeah, why awesome don't guy. why don't we have you stop your screen share so we can all yes. see you and Freddie at uh, at the same time? And Freddie, go ahead and turn on your camera. So Darlene, our fabulous behind the scenes assistant, the uh, administrative director of NAFA, will spotlight Freddie so we can see Freddie, so we can see Freddie too. Oh, I'm so excited. And while, while we're getting Freddie, so let's just recap while we're getting Freddie on screen, let's just recap a little bit some of the tips we saw during your presentation. So first of all, you don't have to have a lot of money. You can do fancy things with fancier lighting. You can do fancy things with medium uh, price lightning, lighting, and you can do fancy things with really cheap lights. Mm -hmm. um, Second of all, always have a tripod. Yep. And it helps to have one with a remote or some kind of remote situation so you're not running back and forth to your camera with a timer. Mm -hmm. um, oh, if, if I may interject on that, if you use your please. phone, I know like uh, iPhones, uh, a lot of folks have the iPhone and the Apple Watch combo. I think the Apple Watch has this remote that allows you to uh, trigger the iPhone remotely. So then that way the, the iPhone's looking at you and you can just use your wrist to, to engage the image. So if anything you can to get that camera on the tripod and out of your hands, yes. whatever technology is available to you with your device, there are some really affordable selfie remotes too that, that um, work with different kinds of phones. Um, okay, and I see Freddie on screen. So, um, so I know uh, Freddie was gonna join us to talk a little bit about the experience of working with Spencer as a photographer and what he's learned from that. Hi, Freddie, welcome. Hi, Hi. thank you for having me. Um, so do you wanna tell us how you got started working with Spencer? Sure, um, okay, I think it was about two years ago. Um, it was a casting call for a company and he was a photographer and he was just doing some quick shots of everyone. It was a casting call, I think there's about 40 people there. Um, and he had this attitude of just really putting you at ease. He wanted me to smile. I hate smiling, um, but he he coaches you through it. Um, and so it just, it felt very uh, natural for me, which is rare. And then about a week later, I messaged him on Instagram and I told him how comfortable I felt with him. And thank you for that, because that's rare for me. And he's like, oh, we gotta, you know, do some more pictures and, you know, um, you know, you were really good. And I'm like, okay, that sounds good to me because, you know, I've seen his work and it's amazing. So we did um, another shoot together. And the thing with Spencer is I have a, what you would call a, um, a thirst trap Instagram account, which nothing wrong with that, you know? 
uh, but you usually don't use as much clothing on those ones, you know, for the bear community. Um, I felt more comfortable doing that than wearing clothing because I thought I wouldn't get the validation um, and I needed those likes, you know what I'm saying? And Spencer told me like, no, you look, you look good. Just, you know, take this picture, you know, like this and the shadows and like, we'll hit you here and I'm going to accentuate you. I'm not going to hide you. And I'm going to bring this out and that out. And I'm like, okay, you know, and his pictures made me feel so much more confident in me fully clothed with, you know, not oh. trying to get a like. He, he made me like myself more which is something I can't repay him for. And the way he, I mean, you should see him work. He will, he'll, you'll pose and he'll be like, oh, hold that. Let me get this lighting over here. And he'll, it's like a dance. He will switch from here to there to there, getting these other lights on you, changing uh, the lights, changing the lens. Um, it's, it's, it's poetic really, the way everything just moves, you know? And he finds a way to make you feel so comfortable, um, so empowered, uh, like I said, he doesn't, there's so many plus size photographers who want to hide your body. They want to give you the tips and the tr and secrets to take away your double chin. So, you know, suck in you know, your neck and stuff. Spencer doesn't do that. He will tell you, you know, pose like this, but I'm also going to get this light on your cheek because it looks really good right now. And yeah, you're going to still see some double chin, but it doesn't matter because he takes it. He, he combined landscape photography and, and selfie portrait photography seamlessly because he would take pictures i don't know if you've seen his work but he has beautiful scenery shots of mountains and waterfalls and he gets the lighting just right from the sun and, and it's beautiful to watch but then he combined that into selfie and his, his garage studio and i'm just like you are just a master at this it's it's a pleasure to work with him it's a pleasure to know him anybody who i know anybody who's watching this already met him they're gonna say the same thing he's just one of the best people and when he told me he was going to be doing this, I'm like, I'm so happy for you. I want people to see you out there. And he's like, you have to, you know, go on with me. Like, no, I don't want, you know, like take anything away from you. And not even a second, but he, uh, he's a great person. So Freddie, um, so audience, if you have more questions, I saw one question in the chat, which was about using a self-timer or a remote. I think we've covered that. Um, if you want to mm -hmm. ask any follow-ups, um, Stephen, please do. But um, if you have other questions that you want to put in the chat, we probably have time for at least two or three questions from the audience. Um, okay. While y'all cue those up, I want to ask you, Freddie, um, how have you changed the way you take pictures of yourself after um, having yes. moved for Spencer and worked with Spencer? Well, first of all, he inspired me to get a better camera. <laughs> he, he told me, you know, <laughs> you're not going to get those good shots with a regular, you know, cell phone, which is true. Um, not that he didn't tell me, he taught me how to take better pictures with a cell phone. Don't get me wrong. But um, yeah, I, I got a new camera because of him. The tripod um, is a must, as he was saying. Um, I have, uh, I too have for my phone, you know, for my, uh, for my cell phone, if I use my cell phone or whatever, I have to have it on remote and I'll tuck it into my hand. And I'll just like hide it, you know, in my wrist. That way I can take it from afar. Um, lighting. Um, I used to just take normal pictures, but now I have to make sure my lighting is better. I told him right before we went on here, I'm like, okay, I'm dressed. I got to test my lighting to make sure everything's looking okay, you know, because he's, he really turned me on to the whole lighting aspect. I mean, if you want a quality picture, you really need to capture the lighting. And, um, and he's taught me uh, tricks of the trade for that. And I, I continue to use it my own account now thank you my god oh thank you let me oh, i can talk you up for a million times more than that but you know <laughs> so y'all can see lots more pictures of freddie on spencer's however chubby account freddie do you want to tell people where they can find you directly if they want to see how you're uh, capturing yourself yeah on, I, on instagram i'm uh, prince frederick 83 prince frederick 83 mm -hmm. great so um <laughs> Go ahead, Spencer. And so I, I want to say I remember when uh, when Freddie introduced me to what thirst meant because this was uh, about uh, yeah this was I think 2018 when I took that uh, the model shoot and I, I I tried to find the folks that I photographed tried to uh, connect the photograph the model and the Instagram account so then that way the company could go ahead and check them out and he said um. Sure, uh, but just so you know, it's a thirst account. And I was like, I had no idea what, what that meant. And I looked and I was like, oh, 
Fast forward a couple of years later, it's uh, it's from a lot of these accounts that I've actually began to study and learn about how bodies are, you know, how they how they look in different lights. And so I have a lot to learn from the thirst community, as well, <laughs> I guess you could say. Um, but uh, he actually reminded me, uh, Fre Freddie is has been one of uh, my greatest friends in, in this community. Uh, I have also heard from others who reached out to me saying that uh, if they saw full-figured big guys, because the you know guys who show their body, it's it's kind of it's it's not a thing we're very uh, we see too often. So if they saw someone that looked like them when they were younger, it, it would have changed a lot of things. And I know for me, it, it certainly would have. Um, you know, a lot of the confidence, a lot of the self-esteem issues that I had growing up, it, I just didn't see things like that. So um, when I get messages from a lot of the folks that I photograph, it just, it's the warm fuzzies. And that's why I keep doing this. It's my drive. Um, landscapes don't talk back to me. You know, I can stand in front of Mount Hood for four hours and I have, and I'll take the picture. I'll go home. I'll hike back to the car. I'll go home and I'll be super tired. But it's that, it's when the uh, when I photograph a person and the person sees it and uh, and they get that connection and they're like, I never knew I could look like that. I, I live for that. And that's, oh, I love it. Oh my God, I'm addicted to it. <laughs> so. well, and, and, and it makes an impression on on the, the person who's the subject of that portrait. It makes an impression on the other folks who saw the portrait. Um, I think this is a great time for me to thank um, our friend, Trevor Kizan from the Big Fat Gay podcast who introduced me to Spencer and um and you know as Trevor and I were talking and he's like Spencer Pablo and I'm looking that up on Instagram and I'm like what, oh. what? <laughs> um it, it's truly fantastic please go and look at um please go and look at those Instagrams if you're not already on Instagram you can still go to instagram.com slash however chubby and and see those mm -hmm. photos so even if you're not using it already uh, on your own device as an app you can still see those photos um so question trevor, from the oh i'm sorry trevor was actually one of the folks that i photographed also the same mall shoot that i met uh freddie at and i'm going to see trevor in a couple of weeks too he's going to be down in my town so yeah, we, we love Trevor. Trevor's a member of our Future of NAFA committee and has really um, connected with uh, connected us with a lot of great folks. Thanks, Trevor. Um, okay, question from the chat. How do you account for different skin tones when taking portraits? Oh, um, I, I think today it's just the cameras do a good job just automatically adjusting. Uh, I usually leave my cameras alone. I have a setting that, uh, you know, because when you buy a lot of these cameras nowadays, you're also kind of buying a computer inside, right? Mm -hmm. So these things aren't like the, the, the typical where you had to change film. Um, yeah, I, I take the, the photo and it adjusts if uh, it's really not so much the, uh, the skin tone, it's the ambient light. The, which is how come I, I pick so so one of the images that I shared of Rodney, for instance, uh, he's uh, uh, he was one of uh, the folks that I brought up that I photographed him through the office. When I first photographed him before the pandemic, um, I said, yes, let's meet up. Let's meet up at seven in the morning. And a lot of the folks aren't early risers. And so uh, for me, I always get up super early uh, for like sunrise, sunset, because they, they, that's when the light looks good. So I just look for ambient light. I have yet to come upon an issue of where uh, the, uh, the skin color has made me pause and go, oh, you know what, I need a, the, the gear that I have, I need to adjust certain things. The computer inside of these things, it, it tends to do a pretty good job. Um, it's just, I think that the bodies, they throw shadow in similar fashions. You know, if you've got a belly, if you have, uh, a chest, if you have mass somewhere, the shadow is going to fall the same. It's just going to be shaped a little bit differently. But if your skin color is on the lighter end, if it's on the darker end, it has never been a problem. So, And is, is your goal, you mentioned earlier hating Photoshop, is your goal to get photos that have to have very little retouching? Um, so Could you have retouching at yes. all? Uh, I do minimal retouching. Um, a lot of the images that I have, 
uh, like for instance, if I'll photograph and there's clouds in the sky, and I'll just give you an example. You'll photograph uh, uh, someone at the beach. It's the middle of the day, there's clouds in the sky and the person's in front and the sun's behind them. If you expose for the, the sky, the person's gonna be a silhouette. If you expose for the person, the clouds and everything behind them is just gonna be this bright white mass, right? And so I will leverage, I'll do the retouching to try to bring uh, details back from the brightness, details back from the shadows. Pretty, so that's pretty much it. Um, I clean up blemishes like uh, uh, the, the image where it was a top-down shot in my garage. My remote for my camera was sitting next to me. So I just used Photoshop real quick to kind of remove that. Um, but yeah. Yep. We have a question for you from, from the chat. How do you suggest people handle light reflections when they wear glasses? Oh my gosh, that's a great question. Okay, so lights will come at you from a particular, I'm gonna get nerdy here. Lights will come at you from a particular vector. I am gonna use my, my phone here as an example. So if, pretend these are glasses, right? If I'm here, I am reflecting my light source. All you have to do is just kind of get that light source out, tilt your head a little bit, you know, differently. Um, you know, that that's how you can that's how you can kind of get rid of the reflections in the in the um, eyeglasses. If you're shooting outside and things are just super bright, um, there there are these uh, filters you could put in front that are polarizers, and th there's a physics behind it. But what happens is um, as you rotate the circular polarizer, it starts getting rid of certain light angles. So that's a, that's a, a way to do it, but really just the easiest way is just to tilt your head a certain way, turn it a certain way, nice and slow, let that photographer guide you and get rid of some of those reflections that way. What about impromptu selfies? You've been show, showing us some things about how we can pose and use props around us and use lighting around us. What if I'm just like, I'm going for a walk and, it, and I, it's a really lovely tree and I wanna take a selfie in front of it. I don't have my tripod with me on this walk. I don't have an extra light. What do I do to make <laughs> okay. sure it looks good? All right, so uh, if look for shade, right? So if you're just walking around, um, it's the middle of the day, you, you see this beautiful tree, the problem with trees is that the, the leaves will, the branch, you know, the leaves and the branch, uh, it'll start to give you dappled light where mm -hmm. what'll hit you is gonna be parts of the sun, parts of the shade, parts of the sun, parts of the shade. It looks, it doesn't look too good, right? So just look for a good uniform soft light. So if that means go on the other side of the tree where it's all shade, go there, uh, practice facial poses, avoid duck lips, you know what I mean? Um, just go for a nice casual, ha, huh, exhale through the mouth, smile, yes. You know, so um, uh, if you go to my Instagram, you'll see some of the, it's, it's, it's kind of a joke that I did. Uh, it was just me kind of trying, you know, because 2020, we all know how 2020 was. Um, I wanted to try to make people smile. So I kind of got in front of the camera and tried to show different ways of doing facial posing. And if you can figure out ways of, uh, you know, if, if you can find out what, kind of smiles you could put out, what kind of frowns you could put out, how you know serious you could look, kind of go with that, but avoid duck lips at all costs. Um, you know, just kind of a, like right now, it's like you've got a good casual, like natural smile, your face is warm, it, it's welcoming, but it's uh, a lot of time, oh, this is, ah, that's a good tip. You it's not duck lips. Du duck lips is, that's yes. mine, right? <laughs> yeah. So a lot of times when I photograph someone, and they have, uh, I was looking for my tablet, but I'll photograph someone and they'll do what's called an over smile. So they'll do this, right? They'll, they'll do that. Cause that's just, you know, we, so what I'll do is I'll look at that smile and I'll give it a percentage and I'll be like, okay, that's a hundred percent smile. I want you to give me a 60% smile. And then that way they'll, they'll, you know, their analytical side of their brain will start to associate with the, with the size of their smile. And then they'll, they'll tone it down. So just kind of work with, uh, just see what kind of facial range you have. Look for the shade. Hold your hand out as much as you can. Try to have faith in your back camera and use your back camera on your phone. That's a lot easier if you have a phone that lets you change the settings so you can touch the screen anywhere to take the picture, mm -hmm. as opposed to having to try to find that button when you can't see your back camera. Correct. Just a little tip from somebody who's taken a lot of selfies <laughs> over the years. 
Um, okay, last question from the audience, Spencer. What is um, what is your dream location? Um, oh, Stephen, I'll get that question into. But before we do that, what is your dream location for a photo shoot? Okay, all right. So um, I, I may have alluded to it earlier. I love landscapes, and I love people, and I love how you can see parallels with like people and the landscape. And so like one thing in my mind, I wanted to take folks to, cause I'll visit, my family will go out to the sand dunes cause it's a nice way to socially distance. And it's just, it's fun. No one else goes out there really. So we'll go out to the sand dunes. But if you know how sand dunes look, they're like shaped like this. And there's a lot of parallels in bodies with mass, right? And so I've always wanted to bring a body that has a shape that mimics the environment they're in. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, traveling, traveling the world, seeing textures out there that that contrast uh, skins. You know, uh, uh, being in a sand dune, uh, a person there, some like white fat or white light fabric, kind of a sheer wind. That's one thing I have. Another one is uh, um, in like my pool, I wanted to actually bring some heavy light um, outside of the pool and illuminate down. So then that way I could have someone with that same fabric. I wanted to do this whole like theme with this fabric and just lightness, you know, uh, and just an airiness about them. And I wanted to bring someone in the pool where that light is just coming down really hard. And it's just them and this fabric that just kind of swoops around them. So, you know, and they're not exotic places. Literally the sand dunes is on my way over to Arizona, you know, um, it's maybe two hours away from here. My pool, super not exotic at all. Um, uh, yeah, so those are the kind of places I want to do a photo shoot with people. Um, otherwise, it's here. If I were to look for a place where I could just go crazy with like landscapes, Iceland would probably be it. that or the Faroe Islands, which is kind of in that area. Wow. Uh, well, yeah. we we will look forward to seeing those photos when you get to fulfill those fantasies. So, so for real, final question from the chat, <laughs> and then we'll go ahead and wrap up. Are you taking on new people for However Chubby? And if oh, yeah. so, how do people get involved? So reach out to me. Um, uh, even better, if you're in Southern California, my uh, I will say this, before the pandemic, the vast majority, like 90% of my uh, photo work uh, that involved people were families, events, weddings, things like that. Now, on this side, now that people are getting vaccinated, I would conject it's maybe close to 70% of my work is now in, the, in, 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 the, uh, in this space, in the space that I love, that I've just discovered mm -hmm. about myself. So it, it's kind of flipped and I love working with folks who've never been in front of a camera before. Um, they're malleable. They're the ones that I can kind of give them information on how to pose and tips. And then when I see that, when I see it click and, and, the, and they, I actually start seeing them move in a way that, you know, it, it, uh, in, instead of being robotic, I'll see them move in a way that, uh, that is, um, uh, representative of their confidence that's uh it's just it's those little things you know what i mean so yeah uh if uh if you're down here please let me know uh, a lot of my work is uh has been in this space and there's a lot of it that's coming upcoming i, I know in the next like three months um i'm booking already i think i have about a dozen jobs which is cool which is like you know uh after coming from zero during much of the pandemic this is this is kind of, I have to remember how to talk to people. <laughs> but, and what about folks who are not, um, who are not local to you? Do you travel that, or will you now that the world's opening back up? Do you do virtual photography sessions? Is there any oh, way for okay. me to be involved if I'm, I'm not in Southern California? So uh, a lot, actually, yes, I have done a lot of these one-on-one uh, -on -one kind of tips, uh, consultation meetings. Um, I have maybe done just a small handful during the past year. A lot of these virtual meetings have been a guest speaker. Let's talk about how to photograph sunset. It's been like that, right? But I, I've had a lot of those types of uh, virtual engagements. Um, uh, I've had folks travel over 
for you know to to come over uh, for a job uh, that's usually kind of the thing if they're not down here they will try to plan a trip to San Diego uh, and also kind of that'll piggyback off of a vacation so then that way I can go ahead and photograph them I, I have a couple of those coming up next month also some folks from outside of the state are coming down and, and we're gonna go ahead and you know try some fun stuff um but one thing that I, I want to do with my however chubby, if you want to be a model, by all means, if you want me to photograph you, even better. But I'm trying to empower the folks who come over to my, uh, to my uh, account. I want to show you how you can do this on your own. I just want to show you that you don't need thousands of dollars worth of lighting. You could literally do it off of a skylight. Literally, most of this light, I'm going to turn this light off. Most of the light is actually from the skylight up above that came with a house. A lot of the lights that I otherwise have uh, that I photograph, it's so easy, you know? Um, you just need to you just need to wake up early enough or hang out, uh, you know, just kind of just kind of develop that eye for what light looks good. Um, if it looks good for nature, it probably looks good for you. So. Beautiful. Is there anything we didn't ask you about, Spencer, that you want to make sure that we know about you, your photography, or however chubby? Uh, is there a question you guys didn't ask? No, but I, I do want to let everyone know that um, I've been in this space for a while, but honestly, I've just kind of discovered, um, you know, how I can be of use to a lot of the, a lot of my followers. So I want to thank the folks. I want to thank you for giving me a forum to actually talk about something like this, which I'm super passionate about. Um, if, you know, without this camera and without this community, the past year just would have been, uh, it would have been too much. Uh, so thank you so much for uh, helping me entertain some folks or engaging. I love, I love the engagement that I get. Some folks will send me messages. Some, some people will say, hey, you know what, Spencer, thank you so much for showing people who look like me that we look great. And it's, it's been like my medicine. So thank you so much. You've been a, a really fun guest to have. We've learned so much from you. Um, is there another hashtag we should use? If I, I know however Chubby focuses on men and masculine forms. If we are uh, women or femmes and we use some of your tips, is there like a Spencer Pablo taught me kind of hashtag or should we start that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You're making me feel like uh, that cringe word influencer. I don't, I don't like that word, but... Uh... No, you know, if you just want to leverage, you know, the uh, the ones that I've seen out there, uh, F your beauty standards, I think is an, is a hashtag I've seen uh, for for uh, the plus size guys. It's, you know, the, the big and tall. Um, uh, I've re very recently, because there's a stigma behind the word fat, right? It's become a pejorative uh, for a lot of the cultures out there. But a lot of the cultures are like, fat is, uh, it's simply a descriptor. And so I've well, seen you fat know, positive. Yeah, well, you know, we've been uh, the National Association for first to fa aid fat Americans and now to advance fat acceptance for 52 years. So we are firm believers around these parts in using awesome. the word fat unapologetically. So yes, I do encourage y'all in the audience to look at the fat positive hashtags. And, um, and you know, sometimes you will see the thirst photos. Sometimes you'll see the bathroom selfie. But, um, but people will see what they see. <laughs> Yeah, and any kind of photos you're taking of yourself that make you feel empowered, you know, these tips and tools from Spencer are amazing and are about taking photos where you really stand, you where you embody your body and, and stand in your power, um, but you're also allowed to just play with it anytime. Yes. And, um, and, uh, and you're, when you put those photos out there in the world, fat visibility is activism and it is a way of, um, of, enforcing for everybody else that we're just here in the bodies we have and and as spencer said earlier we do all kinds of things in them and um and and we show when we show that to each other it empowers each other so thank you spencer for your self-portraits your portraits of all of these fab fabulous models that you've worked with again everyone that instagram is at however chubby and you can also see spencer's other work at spencer pablo photography uh, both on instagram also spencer pablo photography.com once again we want to thank spencer and freddie thanks freddie for being with us today um 
all of you. I know some of Spencer's other models were here with us live. And, um, and of course, thank you to Pro Bono ASL for their interpreting today. Um, if you, again, want to see other events that we have coming up from NAFA, you can just go to nafa.org or follow us on your favorite social media. We are NAFA official, no spaces, no underscores, just NAFA official. And, um, and we look forward to seeing you next time for the NAFA webinar series. Take care, everyone. Thank you.